Hi, this is Colin from Worth of Wisdom with news that more than 100 items belonging to Patty Boyd, including lots from George Harrison and Eric Clapton, are going up for sale at Chris's auction house in March. I've looked through the lots and picked some of the most interesting for Beatles fans. First up, the wedding reception of Eric and Patty on the 19th of May 1979 at Clapton's Hurtwood Edge estate in Surrey. This marked the first occasion that the three former Beatles would play together since the Apple rooftop gig on the 30th of January 1969. Shown here a unique shot of Paul and George jamming on the outdoor stage with Traffic's Jim Capaldi on drums. Then, in chronological order, we have photos from George and Patty's honeymoon in Barbados, which is now the Sandy Lane estate. One day, Queen Elizabeth drove past in an open-top car, waving to everyone, with Prince Philip sitting beside her, head buried in a newspaper. There are also 18 photos taken by Patty during the Beatles' stay at Maharishi Manesh Yogi's ashram in Rishikesh, India, in 1968. Here's a rare collaborative drawing of George and Patty's sitting room at Kinforms in Isha, Surrey, around 1969, primarily executed by John Lennon, who started a drawing to which George and Patty added. Patty recounts, I remember feeling embarrassed after drawing the octopus because I felt I had ruined John's drawing. I believe George drew the peacock. We were in the big sitting room with the two big round windows and a copy of the Salvador Dali fireplace. Our cat, Jostic, can be seen in a drawing. This extensive collection also features a number of handwritten notes from George, including lyrics from the song Mystical One, with an estimated price of 30 to 50,000 pounds. Much is made of John and Paul's artwork, but George was no dab hand either. Here's a self-portrait with George sitting under an apple tree with handwritten album title George Harrison, publisher credit BMI Harry songs and joke track listings. There are also some very candid photos of George on holiday and trying to remain incognito from around 1971. Patty Boyd again. George was never happy with his celebrity status. He hated being recognised, people feeling that they owned him and never giving him any peace. And it got to the point where we simply stopped going out altogether. So the trip to Sky was the most wonderful experience for both of us. Next up is a typescript nonsense letter from John, dated the 25th of June 1973, titled Another Letter from the Deck of Fred a Staircase purporting to copy all four members of the Beatles and numerous others, but probably sent only to George in jest, presenting ridiculous business suggestions for agreement. Lennon jokes, enough of this nonsense. I think we should give Apple to the lowest bidder, or donate it to animal slaughter. How about each of us realizing our records in one country only? I'd like to have Norway. If you agree, Please sing, sign, on the dotted line. Next up are George, Ringo, Jim Horn, Clive Foreman, Nicky Hopkins, Jim Keltner, and entertainment lawyer Abe Soma, uh, filling in for the absent Gary Wright, posing for an album cover shoot at Soma's Mock Tudor uh, Los Angeles home. Patty joined several photographers who were assigned to shoot Harrison's parody reenactment of Da Vinci's The Last Supper for the interior gatefold of his 1973 album Living in the Material World. On to 1974 with Patty, George, Ronnie and Chrissy Wood with Ravi Shankar's nephew Kumar and Jostic, their Siamese cat, at Friar Park in the early morning. Patty recounts that whole period was insane. Our lives were fueled by alcohol and cocaine, and so it was with everyone who came into our sphere. We were all as drunk, stoned and single-minded as the other. Nobody seemed to have appointments, deadlines or anything pressing in their lives. No structure or responsibilities. There's also a magnificent parcel of ephemera 
from George Harrison's Dark Horse Tour, sent to Patty and Eric by George circa November 1974. Here, George is shown taking a concoction of honey and vinegar to soothe his aching vocal cords. And lastly, a letter from George to his husband-in-law, Eric, on Harrison's limited letterhead, dated the 26th of October 1982. This illustrates the chaotic nature of the business side of the Bangladesh concert, with aspects still unresolved more than 10 years later. The letter requests a signed release form to confirm Eric's consent to appear in a forthcoming video release of the film in order to continue helping UNICEF and informing him that after 10 years of hassling with the IRS, additional funds have just been handed over to the US Committee for UNICEF, which has now received in excess of $10 million. Signed in blue ink, thank you, Squire. See you soon. Love, George. And annotated with the OM symbol. Thanks for watching. Please click on subscribe to receive the latest Beatles news first.